Look at this Model 15. Well, you might think it is. To be accurate, it's the predecessor of the 15, with its distinctive fiddle bass and the tension unit on the faceplate. It's an improved family. Collectors also know this as the first Singer Class 15. So it is a Singer 15-1. Looks like a 15 all along. Built in 1879 till around 1895. This one is from 1890. It's a little dirty, but mechanically it's flawless. In this video I will tell you how to make it operational. Threading, maintenance, as much as I can tell you. But to start with the needle. More or less every model had its own needle type. Like the 24x1 for the model 24 and the 12x1 for the model 12. And now Singer introduced the 15x1 for the class 15, also known as the 2020 and the 705H. It became the standard we still use today. This needle was used in basically every Singer 15. This one, to this one, and this, and even this later Singer. Insert the needle with the flat shank facing inside, to the right. The class 15 set the bar for what we know as standard, including the bobbin of the later models. In this improved family it's still not standard. It is thinner compared to the later class 15 bobbins. In the later class 15 we used this bobbin, but in the improved family you need the improved family bobbin. No, I did not make that up. Original bobbins are hard to come by, but luckily reproductions are still available. According to needle bar, item number 2073 can still be ordered, due to the fact that this bobbin is still being used on other models. And the bobbin needs to be mounted in the so-called long beak shuttle. To remove it, open the sliding plate or tilt the entire machine on its side. Move the wheel on the rear until the needle bar is in its lowest position. Carefully open the shuttle and the bobbin will drop out. And now winding a bobbin. The improved family was equipped with a number of different units. This, well, entity has or had a large wheel and the leather is almost non-existing. I hope it will function while I'm filming it. Slide the empty bobbin on this knob. The spool sits on the bottom plate. Guide the thread below these two discs. Usually the thread goes up to the winder, but in this case that's rather useless. Instead I go towards the unit on the right, in or around this curly metal thing towards the bobbin. I think this is the right way. With most improved family models you can wind without the needle moving. Turn this knob a quarter turn to your left. Push the unit towards the balance wheel and start winding by turning the hand crank. Well, that didn't work as planned, but you understand what I was trying to do, I think. When there's enough thread, the unit springs back to the original position, but you can push the lever yourself too if you want to. Cut the thread and slide it off. Don't forget to tighten the plate on the rear a quarter turn to your right. And now the hardest part, how to position the bobbin in the shuttle underneath. Hold the bobbin in your left hand, with the thread coming towards you from the top. Hold the thread around your index finger like this. Place the bobbin in the long beak shuttle and at the same time press the thread into the slot of the delivery eye. Press the bobbin and then gently withdraw your thumb so you can close it into place. Now pull the thread towards the delivery eye and you're good to go. And now the important stuff, how to thread the machine. The spool sits on top of the machine. Grab the string from the spool and hook it behind this hook on the rear and then down towards the tension assembly. Behind and below the two discs and then up. Over the bar and let the spring catch the thread. 
then up to the take-up arm and pull it through from the rear to the front. Then down towards the first hook and the second hook on the needle bar. Pull the thread from left to right through the needle, which is placed with the flat side facing right. Now hold the string and let the wheel make a complete turn in order to catch the bottom thread. And now you can sew with this beauty. Really this is actually the first time I sew with this improved family. It is super quiet and a very smooth runner. We can clearly see the oscillating hook system. The hook picks up the thread and wraps it around the race and then moves back again to do this process all over again. What else to tell you? Well, the upper thread tension can be altered using this knob, but you probably already knew that. The other knob or handle is on the front. It determines the stitch length. Loosen it, move it up and retighten it for a compact stitch, or loosen it move it downwards and retighten it for a wider stitch. In order to sew, you need to move the handle away from you like this. Like every tool, you need to maintain your Singer sewing machine. Once a while, deposit a drop of sewing machine oil in the holes of the machine. Only one screw holds this plate on the short side on your left. Does anything hinges or move? Deposit one drop of sewing machine oil. The same goes for the inspection plate on the rear. One screw, look, droplet and done. And to finish this necessary task, tilt it on its side and oil multiple points or places. You will notice it when it's needed. The machine operates a little more Rough. Is that the correct word? I have multiple videos on the most steps I just talked about and can be handy when you need quick help. Well, did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. It really helps this channel if you like this video. I wish you a very nice day and I will see you in the next video.